So actually, uh, for Solar Impulse, the challenge we have is that it's a very light aircraft and uh, its speed is around 30 knots. So to get it just in the middle of our civilian traffic, it's a bit of a complexity added. So we prefer to um, create a procedure with uh, our colleagues in charge of preparing procedure with them in order that the Solar Impulse goes um, in the equivalent of the military area, so that is apart from our uh, civilian traffic and um, also is protected from uh, the liners, that could be a problem for him. Just uh, as an example, uh, if a liner has to uh, fly closer than 5 nautical miles from Solar Impulse, uh, it must be 3000 feet above him and, and below it's uh, 1000 feet like others. So uh, the preparation uh, of the flight, because it's a flight test somewhere, is, is the very important thing we have to achieve. And then also uh, we have to display correctly uh, the zone uh, where solar impulse will go and uh, to uh, display on our screens in here for our colleagues uh, up to which level is climbing. We, we did all the the, the coordination with militaries and uh, we allowed Solar Impulse to perform their high altitude uh, flights also within this area. We allowed them to perform their long duration flights as well. So they performed, I think it was an 18 hours flight. So it was an airspace that was segregated and uh, which we didn't use for this, um, for this period of 18 hours. The Solar Impulse is a very enthusiastic project. It's a very big challenge to be able to fly around the world just pro um, benefiting from, uh, from the sun. And it was, um, it was quite a challenge to, to be able to perform all these flights and it was also a challenge for us to allow Solar Impulse to fly without penalizing all the other uh, uh, aircraft operators. I wish uh, all the best to Solar Impulse. Um, for a lot of reasons, so we are proud that we helped them in the beginning of, of this big adventure, uh, providing them the best service to, to try and test uh, everything they could uh, to achieve what they're going to achieve. And also I want to say hello to my, my colleagues like uh, Niklas Gerber and uh, Martin Briner or Samuel Depra or André Fazel, uh, former colleagues, controllers. And uh, we are happy to, to work together and it's also maybe a good reason why uh, we had a very good uh, relationship and that uh, we were able to set up uh, the right procedures to make it happen. Voilà. A special greeting to Niklaus Gerber, who was a former uh, Geneva air traffic controller. So he spent uh, 30 to 35 years in front of the radar here in Geneva. And now to, to find him on the other side was, uh, was very exciting as well.